the power of the upper extension, minor blues scale. You can say so much with this simple three string solo in position. And it's great for being able to create tailor fitted licks to progressions like the one, four, five in the key of E or E7, A7, B7. This is because I can find the root notes for each of those chords, E, A, B, directly in the solo in position itself. Here we are. E, A, B, or like this, one, four, five. That means that I can take a given phrase and adjust the tail end of it so that way that lick becomes tailor fitted to each chord in the progression, giving my, uh, my solos a sense of direction. For example, I can play something like this, following each chord in a 12 bar blues, starting with the one chord E. resolving on an E note. I can switch it up for the four chord A. Changing the last note to an A note. And back to the E, the five, the four, and the one. Let's take a close look at the fretboard and break that down. Okay, a close look at the fretboard, getting started with section one of this lesson. Before we get started learning how to play those licks, we have to learn what is the upper extension of the minor pentatonic scale and minor blues scale. Most guitar players start off jamming in the main position of the minor pentatonic scale. Zero, three, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two, zero, three, zero, three. Not long after that, they learn that you can add in the flat at fifth, and then that will make it into a minor blues scale. Zero, three, zero, one, two, zero, two, that's one octave. Zero, two, three, zero, three, zero, three. So many great options. Right there inside that box. Now the next step, if you really want to get cooking, is to go up into some higher notes. For example, that upper extension is something that you can use to really hit a climax in your solo. To get there, we just slide up on the G string. Now I'm on the fourth fret, uh, G string if I'm in the key of E. And right there, I can find the octaves of the notes that I have here. on the G, B, and high E strings. All right, and just like that, we have the upper extension of the minor blues scale, a great, very simple three string solo in box. Okay, so let's get this little solo in box down. You have the basic pentatonic version. Four, three, five, three, five. And of course you can add in the flat fifth, for the minor blues scale version. Now both of these solo in boxes are actually sub positions of a full caged position. Surrounding this solo in box, we have, for example, for playing in the key of E, we have an E7 chord played in its D shaped position. A D7 chord brought up a full step, transposed to E. Now overlapping with that shape, we have a full position of the minor pentatonic scale and also the minor blues scale. For example, all right, right there, that's what we all know and love as being the upper extension, but it actually goes down another octave. Okay, and if you want to learn how to play your pentatonic scales up and down the fretboard in all caged positions, then you can click the card right up there in the corner. But for today, we're just going to focus on that little sub position, the upper extension, which is so useful. Okay, very good everybody. Now that you understand where the upper extension comes from, let's put it to work and learn how we can take a single phrase from that solo in position and customize it for the one, four, and five chords that you find in a 12 bar blues. Now, the only thing we need to do is basically take the core idea and then just change the last note in the lick to match whatever chord you're playing over top of. 
Okay, so for example, I started off my demonstration playing. Okay, so we'll learn how to represent the one chord first. I played a cool little riff, the open A string, a little piece of an A major chord, and then on the end one, I'm hitting the root note, and then hammering on to the major third of the E major chord, first fret of the G string. So, a one, two, three, and four, and one. All right, that sets up the lick. Okay, so getting that down, I slid up to the root note, fifth fret of the B string, right inside that upper extension. Then the high E string, three, five, three. Now the fast part. All right, so there I did a hammer pull, five, six, five, pulling off down to three. Before, representing the E chord by resolving on its root note. So that was five, five, five. Okay, put all that together and we have something that you can play over top of the one chord. You can repeat it twice through for a 12 bar blues. A one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and a three. Two, three, and four, and one, and two, and a three, four, and a two, and three. All right, and right there, I just showed you how you can represent the four chord A. So another cool riff, this one uh, is a transition from the one chord to the four chord. All right, so it's kind of an upstroke on your open strings. And then you're going to do a bend on the third fret of the low E string. More open strings before. Strumming an A major chord, barring with the index finger. Two, two, two. All right, so. And notice how that A major chord was nice and short, so that way we have time to get to the lick. All right, where you can let that lick rip. So it's gonna be the same exact thing. We're sliding up in, the hammer pull, but now we're gonna play five, three, and then finally, a hammer on three up to five, landing on the A note, which is going to be the root note of the A or A7 chord. Okay, so we're just chasing down these root notes. You put that together and we have a nice little part for the four chord A or A7. All right, from there we can return back to the one chord. and repeat what we started with. Now, the next part of the 12 bar will be the walk up to the B or B7 chord. We have fewer beats to work with, so we're gonna take the same exact idea, but we're just gonna trim it down a little bit, so that way we can work within the constraints of the progression. So I walked up to a B dominant seven chord. Oh, one strum of that B7 chord, frets two, one, two, zero, two. From there, we're just going to play. So frets five, three, five, three, slide up to the seventh fret with high E string. That's a B note, the root of the chord. All right, and there you saw that I transitioned to the four chord once again. Again, a condensed version of the lick. A uh, five, three, five, three, hammer, up to the root note of the A or A7 chord. All right, from there, we can go back to the one chord E, but I'm gonna throw in kind of a bonus for today's lesson. A very cool classic turnaround. Okay, so there, I played the root note, then coming in on the measure, we're playing one and two, three, four, one. So on the B string, I'm playing frets five, coupling that with the high E string for each of these notes. Three, two, one. 
two, one, zero, and zero. And then, this very classic tag. Zero, two, zero on the B string, and a strum of an E7 chord to resolve. You put that turnaround together and we have. Okay, if you can play that, then you're ready to move back to the beginning. Let's see if we can play this entire practice routine at a nice slow tempo. A one, two, three, the E. We're gonna repeat that. All right, here, let's go to the A chord. And resolve on the A. Back to the E. Let's go to the five chord. Strum. To the A. And whom? Great classic blues techniques for your week of practice.